Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Addicted After Left in Corner. We have June starting as the White Protoss, for in Corner we have Striker starting as the Blue Zerg. This is going to be on Retro. Game 1 handling going to Jayun because Striker going for 2 Hatch Hydra. Uh, showing the early gas and lack of a natural expansion. I, it's one of those things where I don't know that that was a build order that Striker practiced even. So I'm not sure why he wanted to. I, I would love Striker. Honestly, I think if Striker just sat down and practiced even 30 games doing some Zerg cheese and all ends and then threw it in like just randomly one out of every 10 games he would uh just start crushing and just made it known that okay yeah on occasion i am now going to uh bust you and also d does some information denial rather than showing i don't like the uh let's just show them let them see the gas and let them know zergling speed's coming and then play from there um but uh yeah and I would love to see some random one bait. I don't know, just something creative. I think if he had like one or two creative cheeses in there, all of a sudden the rest of his game would be even more brutal to deal with, which is his game, his main game's already super brutal to deal with. His build orders are fantastic. Uh, he just executes very, very well, is what it comes down to. I actually feel the same. Uh, this is going back a couple uh, machines not as active these days, but I kind of felt the same way about machine as if machine just threw in uh, a cheese here and there. He would be in a pretty good, uh, have that same sort of, same sort of what I want to say. There, there's some word for it, a better, more th more threat range, more threat range. Gateway opener, double gate opener here for Jayun. So Jayun want to go two gate against his opponent. I think in response to game one, this time we got the spawning pool building and hiding it. So even though Striker getting the first scout, it is well hidden to the bottom left hand of the base. In the meantime, he is going to, that, uh, it was overpool, by the way. So this isn't going to be indefensible. And Jane still hasn't scouted, actually, is the other trick. And this is unfortunate. Now the Overlord's actually going to cost Striker here. Because the probe is going to wander out. That's going to confirm Striker's position. So now Jane knows where he needs to send his initial zealots. And Striker still hasn't made his way. He's just, oh man, this is brutal. I think he's presuming that Jayun sent an early probe scout out because he's moving that overlord to bottom left upon seeing that timing. Let's see if he uh, continues to send Zerglings uh, top left because he saw nothing at the natural expansion, which is more standard on this map. Um, in the meantime, probe waking its way up sees the additional... Yeah, see a, a bunch of Zerglings still scattering out. So Striker not catching the timing of that probe making its way out. And we have some Zealot stacking. And we have the, the larva are being saved at the very least. So the larvae are being held right this second, but we have a three hatch um, behind gas in the space of this, and that's going to make this... The lack of zerglings is going to make this zergling pressure all the better. And now Striker checking bottom left is going to find nothing. Um, it, I think he realized his mistake and is now trying to reposition with, with that. And, but does he realize that it's a two gate? Yeah, I think he realized it's a two gate now once he found bottom right and found nothing. And so it was like, okay, you built interior to base. This is going to be a two gate. Getting more Zerglings out, but this might be too late. And also a lot of these Zerglings, not that, these Zerglings that could provide some additional defense are scattered out on the map. Sunken Colony, yeah, Creep Colony getting dropped to try to provide some space. We got five Zerglings here, seven Zerglings to deal with three Zelts, and there's a probe alongside as well. Nice little micro-stepping there. And all of those Zerglings getting absolutely taken care of. And now that Sunken Colony is exposed, additional Zerglings being produced. This is also slowing down Slick, uh, Striker's early game economy. Fort Zealot making its way up. And more Zealots making the way across. So this is all the fighting interior to Jayun's base. And he also left it that attack so he can just sneeze on that Sunken Colony when it's left. Probe attacking that hatchery at the natural expansion. And more Zealots making the way across. Uh, and so it's a lot of Zerglings. And unfortunately, the... Part of the thing is, is if you can get the Zelts in a situation where they're always in superior numbers to the Zerglings and where they can't really fan out and get a surround, that's always a great situation as Protoss, right? Uh, and now it's going to be four Zealots, and yeah, they're just going to continue to march their way across here. And I don't know that Striker can, even despite having the... It looks like he canceled the hatchery at the 3 o'clock location upon this realization to get more resources. But I, yeah, I still don't think he has enough. Three Zerglings versus four Zealots, not a winning combo. He has a couple, and it's going to be a minute before additional spawn. I think Jane's done, and all he has to do is keep flooding the Zealots out here towards the natural. And actually, he might even just, uh, uh, he's just waiting back. I don't even know that he needs to worry about it at this stage. Um, because Striker's still, but yeah, same situation as game one, if you think about it economically. Where Striker's at half the worker count as Jayun. 
if you can force your Zerg opponent to just build Zerglings and he can't kill you with them in the early game, that means you end up with a spear because you can build linearly larva are either zerglings or drones and so if you force them into zerglings you end up in this scenario here where all you have to do is defend and you end up winning in the meantime a cannon dropping at the natural expansion just to play it absolutely safe the zealots making the way back to home base got to be i'm sure they're like if they have like mugs of beer or something like that whatever protoss drink i think they drink sunlight according to the lore or something silly like that so i don't know tapping each other's mugs of light as they're like, ah, we're going to drink nothing here. Because, I don't know. How does that even work? Anyway, Zealot's fanning out at the natural expansion. This has got it to... I think Striker's one shot is the Zergling LN. He's dropping Spire, so he's transitioning to 2-edge Spire, hoping that Jayun doesn't get any... Uh, uh, skips Stargate. And maybe he can get some Zealot damage. The Overlord's going to make its way in. It's going to like that there's no Cybernetic score up as of yet. So maybe a shot here from Stryker. It's it's going to be rough, though. His economy has been absolutely mauled. Um, and honestly, Jayun, once he has a full control group of Zealots in his cannon, which he has now, and his cannon uh, barrage in the background, he could probably walk into these Zerglings as well and clear them out and get rid of that threat and might be able to march away the cross before uh, Mutalists are even up in the air. Um, but there is a there is an opportunity where Jane completely flubs the anti-air. Never mind, there's a cannon down at the main. He gets two and there's a cybernetic score behind this. Um, if he, he and he's already got two cannons near that natural expansion that provide a decent amount of coverage. Some more zerglings folding their way up. So now I'm wondering if it's just going to be mute zergling to crash in against this. Um, Jane currently holding position. He is getting that stargate up. So. We'll have some moments where, with some micro swatting down a cannon, potentially, at the main, this cannon in particular, if he can get on top of the Stargate, he will be able to shut down one base, but even shutting down one base, uh, that still puts him one base versus two, and the Zealots can still stream across the map, take out the Zerglings, and uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Third cannon getting dropped, just in case, the three Mutalisks making their way, the Overlord kind of spotting the, the corner positioning here. And took a free shot. Now the Mutalisks have been spotted. So Jayun knows what to expect. Actually building some Dragoons in between. I like that. To provide even additional padding. Photon Cannons aren't... Or the Phase Disruptor, I should say, are nothing to sneeze at. And so now Striker's got to dive one location to the other. He's down 20 supply. Uh, at even army. Trying to poke at what Zealots he's got. But I don't... Yeah, he doesn't have anything uh, that he can cope with here to make anything happen. So trying, you know, able to pick off some workers here. As soon as the Corsair is out, this potentially gets shut down. But even like shutting down this natural expansion, it's still two base versus, versus one. Hasn't taken out that cannon, so it's going to be a minute before that cannon warps in. The Dragoon's actually holding high ground. Maybe to protect that initial Corsair. 28 workers versus 15, double the economy. Overlord's going to get picked off as well. That's going to put Striker in the red. Actually, is that? It's going to just supply block Striker, it looks like. Nope, going to put him in the red. On top of everything else. The Mutalists making their way in. Um, first Corsair is already out, however. Trying to bully those... Uh, bully those Dragoons. I'm not sure if I can spit that out for a second. Trying to shut down that gas a little bit, but the Corsair is already getting a little bit of that splash damage out. So Striker going to try to continue to build that Mutalisk army up. Uh, unfortunately for him, for pacing, the Corsairs should be out in plenty of times. Plus one queued up? No, plus one queued up. Plus one weapons is queued up. Citadel of Adun anywhere? No, a robotics in the space of this to get... I'm not sure what the, the robotics play is there. Maybe he's worried about lurkers as far as a turnaround. Um, potential lurker play. But as soon as you have, honestly, even four Corsairs, I think this is shut down. Um... Nice little, at least Striker making a game of it. He's got really strong Mutalis Micro. Going for the dive right here. And just eating a lot of Corsair fire. The Dragoon's making their way up. Trying to make a stand. Was able to take the two cannons out, but just too much health was wiped out on these Mutalists. So that's going to be game right there. Nice attempt. Great play earlier uh, in, in the stage here from Jayun. Able to close that out. So Jayun going to continue in the upper bracket where he ended up facing Gypsy. I believe those were televised. Striker moves to the lower bracket. Um, I think I got like one or two more replays, and then we'll move back to Fighting Spirit Mania. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.